Now that you've used your data from the simulation to find the index of refraction for the mystery material, let's take a look at the formal version of the formula. If you entered your data into the spreadsheet correctly, you should have found that the linearized graph, which plotted the sine of the angle in air versus the sine of the angle in your other material, produced a very neat graph with a slope equal to the index of refraction for your material. Once you recognized the significance of the slope of your graph, you were able to turn the general form for the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, into something with physical meaning. You almost certainly ended up with a formula that looks like this. This is not our stopping point, however. The version of the formula currently on the screen only works if the light starts in air. But it's very, very common for light to start in other materials, so we need a way to account for that index of refraction. It turns out that air's index is hidden away in this equation because the index for air is simply 1. With that in mind, we can now rewrite the formula in its final version, known as Snell's Law. Traditionally, rather than writing out the names of the materials, Snell's law is written using numbers as the subscripts, with the number 1 indicating the material the light starts in, and the number 2 indicating the material the light travels to. You're now ready to go use Snell's law to solve some problems.